Hey guys, um, I decided today to make another video. Um, I've been putting it off, but I suddenly felt like this is super, super important to share. And now's the time to share it. I feel like as a society, like we really have lost our fundamental, historical, and profound understanding of what uh, a man and a woman really are and the way God created it, right? He created the blueprint and um, of course, as we know, you know, on this channel, um, the Bible is like the fundamental blueprint for everything. And um, from that, everything flows. And if we understand the blueprint and we really know what we're looking at, then we're going to um, be able to answer any question. And we really won't actually have a lot of questions because we'll understand it. Um, and... I think it's really, like, even a lot of Christians like, have uh, still a rudimentary understanding of what the Bible says about a man and a woman. And God has really been speaking to me on this. I, I did mention it in my last video where I talked about how man is the power and woman is the gate. And how when you understand this concept, like, it seems kind of arbitrary or random um, or even simple. If you really understand that, then you can understand... Um, a lot of concepts like uh, I was talking about in my last video with uh, the Big Bang, right? Which is the let there be light when God created. Um, you can see at an atomic level, you can see how hydrogen was first and hydrogen created helium. So hydrogen is one, one, one. Hydrogen created helium. That's two, two, two. And through helium, uh, carbon, sorry. So, so helium then created like, there's a lot more. I'm very simplifying it. But um, it created 444, which is beryllium. And as we know, 444 represents the door, the Dalit, 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 right? Or the ultimate choice of man, um, you know, to go one way or the other, like have the red pill or the blue pill, really. And through that 444, through that beryllium, um, then this element of carbon was created in that 666. So you can see the story of the gospel in the beginning. So, um, you know, you can see that imagery there of, um, and also uh, I talked about how understanding that men are the power, um, you know, because modern day, like many women want to be like, oh, like women have power too and this whatever. And it's missing the point. Like when you understand that men are the power, um, then you have these fundamental understandings that men, the greatest, most noble character that a man can portray is self-control. Um, and I, uh, you know, I just, it's so true that men, you know, Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot. It's so true that men are really, um, taught to just cut off this power and this power is unnatural and it's, you know, or it's the same as women or whatever. And they're missing this fact that I, Jordan, Jordan Peterson, you know, very eloquently said that uh, men are to be like monsters and they're to learn how to control it. So that's kind of the imagery there. And you can see then you have, you don't have these, this epidemic of weak men, you have this, um, you have these strong men who stand in their role and stand in their understanding. So I talked about that in my last video, but I really wanted to um, elaborate on specifically men how they're created and women how they're created and this is something that i've not seen anyone talk about and i feel like it's so profoundly important and so i really hope you can bear with me and see what i'm talking about and this also is a cornerstone to understand things like who is the bride um what are we to do what's our role these are, these are things that i've been talking about i know that they're not very popular these are the videos that i don't have um they're they're very unpopular in comparison to my old videos but these are the things that God, are talk God is talking to me about. Um, but you can see, what is the bride? What are we here for? What are we supposed to be doing? What does God want of us? Um, and we can also like understand to our marriages and understand why we have problems. I've seen problems even in the church with Christians. And it's like Christians are asking questions or struggling or um, complaining or whatever are suffering, you know, with problems that can be really foundationally answered if we if we really, as Christians, understood what it really means to be a man and a woman, what the Bible itself actually says, the blueprint. So I know that there are probably people who may um, get their panties in a twist. <laughs> 
with the whole Hebrew stuff, but um, let me, hear me out. So some of these concepts I have covered in previous videos, but basically you can see for a man, you would spell it Aleph in Hebrew, Aleph, Yod, uh, sorry, uh, Aleph, um, it's backwards, Aleph, Yod, Shin, right? Because Hebrew is backwards. Um, and so, as you may know, Aleph means one and Shin, it, and so Aleph is also a ox, the pictogram in the ancient Hebrew. And then you have Shin, which is, um, really a character that is reminiscent of the name of God. You can see it in Shem, like Shin Mem. Um, it also looks like a candle because um, in, in the Hebrew script, you would have these like little ticks on each one. So it looks like a line with a tick. It literally looks like a menorah, except with three prongs. And um, you can also see it on Jerusalem, if you look at the map, uh, this is something that's been very talked about in the Christian community. You can see Jerusalem has these three valleys, the Central Valley, and then the Hinnom Valley, and the uh, Kidron Valley, and you have the Temple. And I talked about this in my last video, um, this representation of 322, um, where you have this picture of uh, Gehenna, the outside of where they would burn, you know, basically it's hell, it's a picture of hell on one side, and then on the other side you have the Temple, and so it just... You have to watch that video, it's called The Spiritual uh, Golden Spiral. It's like very long and just he had me go through all these imageries of th this 322 sheen imagery. Um, but basically you can say it means like fire and um, this candle light emanation um, picture of God. And sheen mem, like I've said, it really is also fire water. It's like reminiscent of fire water. Um, it also means name. And so you can get this picture of God just being like, I am, like, what's your name? I am, like, I don't have a name. Like my name is my presence. My name is like life itself. And so, uh oh, my kids are uh, wrestling. Sorry, they're screaming, but they're having fun. Okay, they're not. <laughs> um, so you have this, um, so Shin Mam is like radiation. I've talked about that. It's like the waters below and the radiation above. It's like the same thing. Fire and water spiritually are the same. I've talked about this many times. And then you have the Yod, which is the hand. So many people know this from Yud Hey, Yod Hey Vav Hey, um, behold the hand, behold the nail, which is so that's uh, Yod Hey Vav Hey is Yehovah's name. It means life and it literally points to Jesus Christ because it's like behold the hand, behold the nail, right? Um, and then you have, uh, so sorry, in the ancient Hebrew pictogram, it's also a hand like this, kind of like with the arm. And then you have Aleph, um, which I said, yeah, sorry, I said it's the, the ox and it's number one. So the very interesting thing about in Hebrew is this, is it, I don't know if it's Shin Aleph, hold on, let me check. Right, so it's Aleph Shin. I just, I always get mixed up because Hebrew is backwards, right? And we're just used to reading from left to right. But um, Aleph Sheen is, it means fire, which is uh, really cool. And it makes complete sense. You know, that is, God is the all-consuming fire. He is um, also Chava, which is life. And, um, and as we know from science, you know, life is really energy. Like everything is energy. I know that's like, people say, oh, it's not some new age. That's like literally science. Everything is just basically energy. And and literally everything vibrates, okay, that's just facts. And, and so God is this, um, rip really also represents this essence that goes throughout his creation. He's, you can, everywhere you look, you're supposed to see who, like him and, you know, his character and his presence and his Shem, you know. And also, um, he's also represented by light, you know, and which is radiation. Radiation is electromagnetic, you know. Radiation, it's energy, right? It's vibration. And I've also talked about many times about how in the visible light spectrum and even above and below, you can see you get gamma rays, UV, you know, this, these purple, indigo, uh, blue colors. And then below you get this red, like infrared, like low energy type of stuff. So God really represents this high energy gamma ray type of imagery. I've talked about many times. And so keep that in mind as I, you know, I'm talking about fire, you know, fire is not just this, oh, like, like a flame, like it's, 
um, when it comes to God, like this consuming fire, it's greater. And also, you know, I've talked about on the channel uh, many times about how God's throne is literally like in the language in the Hebrew, especially with Ezekiel, you can see about how you have these four cherubim. They represent the four horns on the um, animal sacrifice altar. That's one that people know um, more easily than the uh, incense altar, which is like a mini version. You know, the incense represents man, the animal sacrifice represents, um, I've said this before, like the angels and also creation, all creation. And it's, remember, it's outside of the temple and the man one is inside. So man is kind of um, taken place, you know, in this closer place um, than angels. And that's why angels will serve us in the time to come. Um, angels are beautiful, but just that's what the Bible says. And, you know, it talks about how Lucifer walked amongst the coals. Um, and so you can see, like, literally God is representing this energy, this fire, this, you know, like, high energy um, flame that sits up, uh, atop the altar right there. And anything that comes in burns. And I've talked about this before, about um, the angels who, again, represent the four horns of the animal sacrifice. Um, what is that material made out of? It's made out of burnished bronze and what did I say I said in this um, in my videos when burnished bronze leaves this hot fire presence it begins to patina um, because of you know carbon carbon reactions and reactions with the um, which is 666 and reactions with the um, atmosphere and it turns green so you get all of that imagery you know with Moses and the bronze snake uh, above and then below you get the serpents that were biting the Israelites. So it seems like I'm bouncing around, but I'm trying to show you a picture of what it means to have God's presence. What does it mean for fire um, and how that's interlinked with life itself. Okay, it's like the life force of everything around us. And so with that understanding, then you understand this profoundness of having the hand in the center of it. Okay, so this hand um, notice how in women, in woman, sorry, um, you don't see a yod. There's no yod. Um, it's only in the man. So this man represents almost like he's in the fire, building, forging, um, creating amongst the presence of God. Um, you, this will then be echoed um, with Adam, who is amongst God's creation, and he's kind of um, placed as uh, the the ruler over the creation and he's to name them and you know it's it's almost like this picture of like the shepherd amongst the sheep in a way right he's stewarding them leading them and whatever so he's supposed man is really representing um if you add that in with god's presence and glory like he's supposed to be this um the worker of that like he's supposed to be like like i've talked about many times the hand, hands and feet of God. And I've talked about this in my last two videos extensively about how in a microcosm of creation that the woman is the woman of the man and in a macrocosm, mankind or humankind, so both man and women are the woman of God. Okay, so you're supposed to look at our own lives and be like, perceive, um, so, and I'll get into it a little bit more, but I've talked about how the woman is the gate. And so in that way, it's like the man working his hand is almost like the gate because he's, he's not literally the power of God, but rather the power of God is amongst him and he's, you know, um, stewarding it, right? As God's hands and feet. This is what we're supposed to be in creation at its perfection. Okay, so... Um, so in a greater way, that's what the man really represents. He's the man who's working the field. And you can see that also in the curse. Um, the man's curse is to work the field in fruitlessness or in, in uh, hardship, okay? So I'll start talking about it in a second, but the woman represents the field and the man, right? She also represents, you know, that. And with the man's hand um, amongst it, he's working the field. And so I'm not saying that women um, so women are just, so I'm going to get into it, but women uh, essentially will represent the spiritual um, essence of God and they also represent, sorry, she also represents creation, okay, the hava, the life, the life.
Okay, so I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can with the woman. So what sets the woman apart from the man is hey, okay, so right here, woman has hey, man has yod. So those are the differentiating things about them. And so I've touched on this very briefly, but I want to use the example of Judas as a um, way to understand what hey really represents because some people say um, it represents behold and again just like fire doesn't really represent what um, this uh, shin aleph really means in the same way um, saying behold doesn't really represent what hey really means okay so using um, the example of Judas uh, if you guys know in Hebrew, I know Judas is often talked about in Greek, okay, but in Hebrew his name is Yehuda, um, and it's the same name as Judea and uh, Judah, okay, the brother, right, the oldest brother of the 12 brothers of um, Jacob, and so they're all, all their names are actually the same, and it's just been transliterated differently okay by translations so it's all the same name okay and so it would be spelled yod hey sorry if I'm, I'm mispronouncing it but yod hey vav dalet which is the d okay sound and then it would be a hey at the end and so if you haven't noticed or you didn't know it's very interesting because this is the same name as god's name with the exception of adding a dalet in there now, if you're not new to this channel, you've been following this channel, you know that <laughs> there's a very uh, interesting relationship with this channel and a Judas. And, and so I actually had done a study on it. Um, the Lord was showing me um, to study it and like the Holy Spirit was like coming upon me and like I had to like literally study this um, and it just all clicked and it was just really amazing. And it's actually something that, um, I was telling, like, it was right before my mom came to visit me. And obviously, if you know this channel too, my mom just lost her soulmate, who she's been together with, like, her whole life, literally. And um, she was having a really hard time, and she was really struggling with, um, she, she loves God so much, okay? But she also struggles with a lot of anger, like, why God? Like, I've been serving you my whole life. Like, what, why have you abandoned me? Like, she's in this really hard struggle um, and I can totally, I, well, I can't imagine how she's feeling, but I can understand why she's struggling like that. And I told her about this and it was really profound for her because, um, it really helps you understand, uh, the love and the, this redemption that God has. It's in, in a new way. So let me explain it. So again, sorry, it's backwards because I usually write left to right. Um, but it, you get the point right up here. You have, um, the yod hey vav hey, and that's the name of Yehovah. That's that's God's beautiful and holy name. And then you have the yod hey vav dalet hey. Okay, so this is actually Yehuda, and that's would be Judas's name, Judea and Judah. Okay, and so as you can notice, it's very interesting that there is this dalet, which means door in Hebrew. Um, right in between this yod he vav and this he. And so when I was looking at this, I was looking at the Dalit and I was like, why is it there specifically? And I just knew that there's like some um, significance to it. So the interesting thing about yod he vav is really in God's name, it's the, it's really the base and the essence of his character. And you can, um, Look it up, there's a lot of information about the, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, the tetragrammaton, they call it, of God's name, um, the whole yod heh vav the four letters. Um, they've, there's a lot of scholarly work on it, and they show how the yod heh vav is really just this essence, um, and each letter has this meaning, um, but the hey really represents like this fulfillment or manifestation of it, okay? And you can see this in Judah's name where it's interesting how you have the name of God, and obviously this is not, you know, when you have the name of God here in Judah's name, uh, or, or Judas's name, or Judea's name, that those three people would be, or Judea's not a people, but 
a group of people, they would be represented as the door rather than the yode vabhe because that's the name of God. So it's very interesting. You, you have this imagery right here of the door, of this picture of man, of these men who were obviously very flawed. Uh, Judah, you know, gave his uh, brother away for money and Judas gave Jesus away for money. I mean, they're very, very mirrored. And then you have Judea who, um, as a whole, gave Jesus away for money to the Romans, right? And, well, for power in their mind, right? Or whatever the reason why um, Caiaphas, the high priest, you know, gave away Jesus. But it was under them, Judea, that this happened. And there's many, you know, scriptures that show this struggle with um, Judea and God. Okay, so Judea, Judea, eh, Judea was the last standing tribes that were together um, where the other 10 tribes were gone and disseminated because of um, sin, right? That happened. And so um, Judea was the, um, the tribes at the time that were representing the Jews. So you can see these very flawed individuals, flawed groups of people that represent the door. And then again, you have that yod Hey vav which represents the essence of God, and this He that represents this manifestation of the, the essence. And so you really get this picture of, you can, you can see like God's here, like behind the door, and he is, his, his like fundamental essence is there. And on the other side of the door is this picture of him appearing to the world, okay? And that is really reminiscent of the mountain where the Israelis were um, in the desert, like sitting there watching and he manifests on the mountain and he's like thundering and he's terrifying and like there's just shaking earthquakes and lightning and everything and they're terrified. And that's a whole, you know, I, I might make a video on that too because um, you can see all this imagery with, and I don't want to get too much into it right now, but on the ephod, Judas's, or sorry, Ju, Ju, Judah's stone is at the bottom center of the cross. Like on the ephod, you have that cross. I told you guys um, in the center where the heart is, that's where the sapphire is. That's the sapphire lapis lazuli heart that's changed. When, um, you know, when God touches us, just like he touched the mountain of stone and it turned into lapis lazuli, um, just like he touched the and carved the, um, the law, it turned into this lapis lazuli tablet, as they say um, in tradition. And just like that, he touches our heart of stone and it turns into sapphire. So it's so amazing on that ephod, you have that heart stone, right? The second row in the middle, it's, it happens to be lapis lazuli. And I'm using sapphire, lapis lazuli um, interchangeably, but um, if you follow this channel, you'll know that um, in Strong's, uh, it's la, lapis, no, sorry, sap, sapir, sapir, and they translate it as lapis lazuli, okay. And so really quickly, also, um, they say that Judas is, um, so again, on the ephod, at the bottom of the cross, that stone is called Shoham in uh, Hebrew, and they translate it to onyx, but I don't believe it's actually onyx. If you actually read Shoham, uh, Shoham means to be, like, made pale and to, it's this picture of, like, terrify and the blood's going from your face and you're made pale your um to blanche that's the that's the word i was looking for and so it's very interesting that it's at the foot of the cross um and you have this imagery of this door this judas this um judea this judah this i'll just say yehuda um that represents this stone um and, and, and again, like onyx is a black stone, so it wouldn't make sense. So sometimes they do translate it as beryl, but just onyx is the popular, um, the popular translation. But beryl is a pale green stone. So this pale green imagery, um, it's really, you know, reminiscent of the opposite of blood being in your face. Like when you're, the blood leaves, you become this sickly pale. And, and you can see that imagery too in Revelation with the um, pale horse, right? It represents being sickly and just no more blood because you're terrified, right? So, um, and it's very interesting too how Shoham is again Shin Mem, which I just talked about is like this Shekinah glory of God, this radiation, this, you know, presence. And then in the middle you have the hay, which is like behold, right? So it's like literally like that's, that's so not onyx, but anyway, so 
so you can see um, again and again this uh, paradigm of God using the least, God using the one at the foot, God is, is using the humble, God is using the failures, the ones who you thought it was impossible for them to be, have any fruit there. Like, think about it like he's using the field that's like, there's no way this field is going to bear any crops, but it like, yet it bears like the most abundant har harvest anyone's ever seen in all of history, right? And that's like the Lazarus experience, like it's this picture of resurrection he literally chose the most dead man who was clearly dead for like four days and he's going to use this as his like ultimate final miracle it's like any man can well not literally but you know there are men maybe out there it's possible that a man could heal a sick man um and you know that's what people like to say nowadays oh we we have all our science and everything we can heal people and we can you know do the heart you know, monitors, but try raising a man back to life after four days. I mean, it's it's got to be God at that point. So through that um, failure and being at the foot, you know, this humbleness, this being in the dirt, right? And again, you get that picture of Jesus coming down from heaven to wash people's feet in the dirt, right? Um, he switched place, places with us at the foot of the cross. Um, but you get that picture of God's glory manifesting in like the greatest way possible with people like Judas, Ju Judah, Judea. So it's very interesting um, how that's set up. And it's almost like to really manifest his I am, this um, essence of who he is. It's like literally everything I just said. It's like the worst of the worst, you know, Judas. Wow. Um, manifesting this, hey, this like brilliant glory of God. And so all of that is to really go back to, sorry, uh, woman and how woman has hay in it. So you can see what hay really means. It's like so much more profound than just like, hey, behold, right? Um, and so with woman, you can see that in the name, it's Isha. I'm sorry if I say it wrong, but... Um, you can see how the sheen and the aleph are together this time and so that's that fire and then it's almost like fire hey like behold fire and again we talked about fire it's more than just a flame right um it's like the fire manifest and so this would then by implication mean that the woman is like the dalet she's like the door she's like i've talked about many times she's the gate of the power okay so man is the power woman is the gate God is the power, he's the consuming fire, and woman or his creation is the gate in which he manifests his glory, okay? So that's why even with uh, Yehuda, right, um, it's men, but in that macrocosm, like I said, you can see that picture of, it actually, like they're actually likened to the woman, but again, we can't think about it in a singular way, like, oh, women, like, they're not women, so they can't be. It's it's more like I what I was talking about before in my video, um, I think it was the spiritual golden spiral, where I was showing how women really are the, like, as the Bible says, I know this is like, some women might have a hard time with this, but um, women are the helpmate of men, and we were made of the man and just like I talked about it with the example of hydrogen and helium hydrogen hydrogen being 111 which is the man helium being 222 which is the woman it was through helium that 666 um, carbon is created and so in that way you go back if you go back to the Garden of Eden you can see how um, the woman is the place of messing up okay and it's not because oh women suck that's not the reason if you, again, if you look into the etymology, if you look into the Hebrew and break it all down um, and the root words, you can see that women, I've talked about this many times um, in my old videos, how women represent wisdom and understanding and knowledge, okay? And um, and I, I might make, well, actually I might say it in this video at the end, but um, one example to understand this is um, if you study about Ashtaroth and this worship of this goddess, this great goddess that, by the way, is throughout all of history. You can see like every culture um, worships some sort of 
Gaia, like nature goddess. They're always nature goddess. Okay, that's really important. And the root word for um, that word, for this, this Ashtaroth goddess, um, it really is connotating, um, which I've talked about before, um, the, the law, the Torah, okay? And this, um, I told you guys in my spiritual um, golden spiral video where with this whole 322 imagery, how the law is the old and Jesus came to fulfill it. You know, I talked about bread, how bread is the old and um, Jesus came to fulfill it in the wine and the water is supposed to be representing the old, like an analogy. And um, the fats are what represent, you know, this newness of that, this fulfillment of that. And so in that same way, um, Torah and law, like it represents this, it's actually, it represents more of this point of failure of man. It's the law itself is beautiful, but it's supposed to show that you can't attain it. Okay. So it's supposed to show, it's like the woman eats of the fruit and gets her um, man to eat of the fruit. And then sh they're like, because they want to be like gods, right? That's what, or be like God and to be gods themselves. And so it's like, oh, you want to be like God? Okay, now you have to follow all these rules because I do it and I don't mess up. So now you got to do it. And if you don't do it, you're going to die. Well, I don't die because I follow the rules perfectly because I'm, you know, I don't make any mistakes. So that's kind of what it's representing. And so also the beginning of Ashtaroth is um, that root word, um, there are scholars, many scholars that also say that it's, and I mean, you can just see with your own eyes, like you really don't need to like, who's the scholars and where, I mean, you can just see that the beginning is literally, it's, it's it sounds exactly like woman. Um, it's the same uh, sound as Aleph, it's ayin, which is also an A sound, okay? And the ayin is the picture for I, but it's also that bicuspid shape that I've been talking about have the, in my last video that represents a gate, okay? The bicuspid shape. You got the eyes, you got the mouth. They're both gates. Um, you know, this feminine uh, nether areas also looks like that. And so um, this feminine female um, gate imagery, um, you can see that in Ashtaroth, um, but except it's 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 very ironic because it's like you're taking away Aleph, which is one, which is Yahweh God. It represents him and you're replacing it with um, the gate, right? And so it's almost like uh, a woman who has become her own God in a way. And now she's literally Ashtaroth and attached to her name is like this law. And so it's kind of amazing to see it play out in real life where you have these Isra Israelis who would follow after that Ashtaroth goddess, a feminine goddess, and they would fail greatly and God was very displeased and they were then condemned by the law and it was just all this, you can see all that imagery there. And so another thing on top of that, I've, I've talked about this before, about how wisdom is also of the old wisdom and knowledge. You can see that in the sacrifices with the animals. Um, the sacrifices with the animals were based off of wisdom and knowledge. It's like if you know all the intricacies of how to do it and how to do it properly and if you obey all this and all this stuff, all this cleanliness and perfection, then you can attain this um, sin sacrifice to like atone for yourself, okay? But with Jesus Christ, it's all about faith and grace. And so faith and grace, again, is the fulfillment of wisdom and knowledge. And so it's very, again, ironic and sad to see that play out in real life where you have all through history, this lust and this constant um, pursuit of wisdom and the love of Sophia, you know, the love of philosophy and all this stuff. Um, and it always ends in destruction. So it's literally a macrocosm and an analogy for the going back to the garden, like everything goes back to the garden with the woman being the place of it. And so I talked about this too in my last video, um, no, in my video three videos ago, where I was talking about um, some people who were saying God has a consort, okay? And again, I told you guys, this is a very like Hellenistic Roman mindset where uh, it's actually in the Sumerians, um, Akkadians, Assyrians, Egyptians, like everyone always said that this God, the great God, like if it was Zeus or whatever, would have a feminine counterpart. And I said, um, the reason why the Hebrew God stands apart is because one, he talks about this, um, he always differentiates himself from Adam 
and he also um, he also talks about how um, he, there's there's that verse which I told you guys about before um, where he says that no one can be in his ear and speak to him and convince him to do something foolish okay and that is literally like him saying that he doesn't need his second in command he doesn't need his advisor um, I advise you <laughs> to go to Psalms uh, Psalms 44 where it talks about the Queen of Ophir and it's really an allegory for um, Christ and his bride and it talks about like she's his his bride is supposed to represent his hands and feet it's supposed to represent his um, advisor and the one who's like in his, like at his side and in his ear and it's it's not saying like they're it's like we're praying to him it's not saying that literally we're convincing Jesus because of course Jesus is like his own man but and he's you know, straight and true um, but we're his we're, we're praying to him and we're pleading and we're interceding and so it's this picture of this second right and. And yet God also talks about how he's self-sufficient. And so he doesn't need that. He doesn't need it, but he does it in love. And um, the reason why that's important is because it also shows that it's this too. That's that place of weakness and that the place of failure for the one. And I just, um, if, you don't, if, it's, if you're having a hard time to understand what I'm saying, I just recommend like going in, going in the Bible and reading all the stories. You'll see this paradigm play over and over and over. Um, and one fun example that I've been studying recently is Balaam okay he's he was the one speaking in the ear and he um first was doing what God was was pleased with by blessing Israel because God interceded in the situation and then you have on the other side he was whispering in the ear telling the king of Moab to um cause the Israelites to sin and God was very upset and he you know put uh, Balaam to death okay so it's just again and again this representation of the woman being um it, it's through it's supposed to show man that it's the wisdom and the knowledge that is not to be chased after and it's actually the faith and the grace in christ okay it's supposed to be that it's not supposed to be all oh, women are just that's not the point um and i'll get to what the benefit of woman is for a man in a second but it's supposed to show men just you know to stop always seeking after the apple, right? We're supposed to seek after Christ Jesus. And so in the positive aspect, um, uh, so again, we have the imagery of the hand amongst the fire. Um, and we have, oh, you know what? I was actually part, um, just listening to this talk um, at a conference uh, and they were talking about, they were, so they're doing teachings and one of them is about um, raising up a proper man um, in this modern world. And they were just all talking about things that they can do with their son. And um, a lot of the fathers were talking about how they like to do things that involve fire, <laughs> which is funny. And I have five brothers, so I'm very, very um, familiar with that type of thing. But it's kind of this irony because like men are built to do that. They're built to be working and making and... Um, it's very important too because it also shows that men are built to construct and build um, physical things and also especially in a marriage okay men are built to construct this physical world for a woman to live in and this is echoed by God where he created um, the world for us to live in um, and you can see this, I know this is like, might be archa archaic to some people, but the tradition, and it doesn't have to be this way, but this is the tradition, and I, I believe how God made the dynamic to be, but women are meant to be, um, you know, tending to the home and tending to the children, and the man goes out and gets all the stuff and goes out into the dangerous world and brings home you know the good things for the family to prosper in this like beautiful home which is this place of safety and so you can see in that dynamic uh, men are good at the physical stuff they're good at making and constructing and using their hands and so it's not something they're lacking in so what are they lacking in they're lacking in what the woman is good at and so what is what the woman is good at 
if you read your word. Um, again, I don't want to bring up all these verses. Like, these are things that you sh concepts you should either know or look up, be a Brian and look up yourself. Um, because it's just, it would take so long to just pick out all these verses for every little thing that I'm talking about. But you should, if you read your Bible, you should know that there's this, always this correlation between eyes and um, the spiritual. And just one example is, again, Balaam, where it talks about, um, his, his name literally is Ayan Ayan, and my apologies, sorry, the center is um, Lamed Ayan, and I talked about Lamed, you know, Lamed is the snake, I talked about the snake um, on this channel, you know, just all I'm going to say is look at the snake's mouth open, okay? It's still basically Ayan, um, but his name and his birthplace and his father's name all center around this imagery of uh, this bicuspid eye, you know, gate shape. And you can also see um, when God speaks through him and his spirit comes upon him, um, you have that imagery where he's prostrate, he, his eyes are closed, and yet God is speaking through him saying um, his eye, and it uses singular eye, okay, um, his eyes open, and it means that he can perceive um, something greater. Um, then you have the cherubim or the courtroom staff of God, like I say, um, they all are covered in eyes, and so that represents this um, ultimate, this unlimited wisdom that is, and, and also the courtroom staff of God, you know, the, the four cherubim, they also before the bride, okay, now the bride has uh, taken over or usurped or whatever, not usurped, but what's a positive version of that? We've taken over that position um, as his meeting place, the four corners, right, of, uh, of him. They were representing the, the kind of the attend attendant or advisor or the one next to God, like they're right next to God, right? And they also literally are like a, sh uh, like a gate, like a, you know, the four corners in which God's fire is manifesting. And I talked about this too in a, a video where you can see um, the Hebrew of the um, description of them, of the cherubim, seraphim, ophanim, right? It's, um, it's, also, it's also pointing to um, the Maseroth, right? The four corners, northwest, east, south. There are the four animals, uh, lion, uh, eagle, um, man, and ox, and what is that? That's the four faces of the cherubim, okay? So it's highly, highly symbolic there, but basically you can see this um, constant correlation of an eye, or eyes, or many, many eyes, and this spiritual understanding, okay? And, and I've said this too as well, another little nugget is in the spiritual realm, there is endless, endless, endless wisdom. Um, many near-death experiences, people have said they, they've died, and they said you basically can know all sorts of stuff really fast. Um, you know, whatever you set your mind on, like if you're asking God questions, like the people who meet Jesus, they say they ask him all sorts of questions and he's just answering and there's just so much information. So wisdom and knowledge is plentiful. It's like gold in heaven. It's like not even precious anymore, okay? And yet we're struggling and struggling and struggling to attain it here, okay? So that's in the physical, there's not really a, uh, there's not really a, a lot of wisdom and knowledge and in the spiritual there's a lot so you can see with those examples um, there is that correlation again with spiritual and wisdom and gait and eye and therefore a woman okay so then what is woman good at a woman is good at a woman is good at you know things to do with the spiritual men construct this beautiful physical world for the women and some men aren't good at it but that's what they're supposed to that's what they're they're created to do to, to work the field and be strong you know strong and bring home all this beautiful stuff and a woman is meant to do the more hidden things you know this more spiritual things like even just taking what the man has brought home and creating it into something beautiful okay or even taking the money that the man you know in tradition okay so there are women who make money too but tradition um, if you have that traditional family, uh, the woman who take the money that the man works for and she makes a beautiful home. So they say, you know, like men who, um, they're making their own home. And I mean, you got like your TV, you got your lazy boy that's in Canada. They call it lazy boy, like that comfy sofa and you got a beer fridge and like, that's it. Right. So women create a beautiful home and for the, the, the husband and the children, 
and again that home is a, a, an echo of like a gate and a, um, you can say het in uh, Hebrew it's that gate surrounding womb again a womb imagery right and womb it, woman is the womb of the man right and so um, I know in my own personal marriage I know my marriage doesn't represent everyone but um, my husband is obviously a Christian, like I've talked about, um, but he wasn't a Christian when we met and it was through our discussions and talking about all these different things and um, I, I answered a lot of questions because God, I told you guys, Jesus appeared to me and anointed me with wisdom and knowledge, which is kind of awkward to say, but it's true. And I had all the answers that he needed and it's all from God, um, but it allowed him to come to Christ and it was really all doing the whole Holy Spirit's doing, um, but I'm thankful He used me. And but I also um, I like to give Him prayers, and I like to um, we like to read the Bible. To, I read the Bible to Him, and you know He's very like practical, and He like He's very distracted by you know He likes to work on stuff and and build his car, like build you know like work on uh, mechanical stuff. Okay. And so I'm more, you know, like, hey, let's, you know, pray or let's do a Bible study, let's read or things like that. And so I can attest to that um, dynamic being very, very fruitful and being very beautiful. It creates this um, synergy and this flow between the man and the woman, between me and my husband. And I've seen this play out very, very successfully um, in other marriages. And I'll be very honest and frank, I, I have friends who um, don't share the same beliefs as me and are looking to, they, they see, they've literally told me, I've had multiple people tell me that they want to have a life like me. They want, they see my husband, they see my family, and they're like, we want that. And they struggle, like there's so many breakups, so many cheating, so many issues, and they don't understand this fundamental um, synergy that men and women should have. And the reason why I'm saying synergy too is because when women understand their strength and stop, um, you know, you know, like trying to be like a man or trying to say, oh, we can do that too, or trying to almost reject what they're built to do, which is like literally to um, steward or usher in life and nurture it and be like this spiritual nurturing. And when, and. I know the Bible talks about um, men being a spiritual leader and men have that boldness and they can pray. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if I'll get into it in this video, but um, men are more likely to pray in a very bold manner. I'll just say it like that and I've seen it. <laughs> and um, I also, there's many studies that they, and I've seen documentaries and studies where um, like, for example, men are more likely to uh, apply and get jobs that are very high paying and they're actually not um, qualified for. So you can see, like, that's just statistics. And so you can see, like, men have that kind of more boldness, like blind boldness to just say whatever, pro proclaim whatever. And that's why, you know, they kind of spearhead that leadership role, especially even um, spiritually. But a man who... Um, that man needs to have like it, it really is created to be when you have a good woman who's a good gate you know a good door for that spiritual um essence of, or presence of god then it just doubles it and triples it and it creates this synergy this you know standing waves if you know standing waves it creates this um abundance um and it's kind of like that imagery again with the uh, man amongst the field, working the field. So when he's working the field, the field is producing um, more and more and more for him. And then he's feeling fulfilled and he's feeling strong. He's feeling spiritually, spiritually nurtured. And the, sorry, guys, I'm trying to talk so fast. Um, spiritually nurtured. And so then he's now feeling a sense of purpose and wanting to um, like he's living to like literally uphold people's lives and he feels that um, respect and honor through that and he then pours himself more into the woman and then the woman's you know feeling taken care of and she's feeling seen and heard and and loved and so then she pours you know so it creates this beautiful synergy and so there's so many um, questions and things I see come up and I think be they, they come up because 
you again people don't understand this even christians who even christians who read the bible and they go to church and hear like talks and stuff they still don't understand like some questions um even today i heard questions at this um conference that i went to um where somebody was talking about um video games for boys and i've seen it myself i have um five brothers and one of my brothers he was like very addicted to uh, video games and he also was very apathetic with his work and just basically everything and now he um, actually has a whole family and he's like working very hard he's very very motivated and he doesn't really play video games like he did um and so to see this and this like video games essentially is a man working in a field that's giving him no spiritual uh, connection or um, investment or um, fruit, okay? You're, you're building a whole life or, you know, you're working towards some badge or what level in a game that it doesn't exist in real life. So there is, yes, it's, you're, you're doing what you're good at and you're exercising that and you feel good about that, but you're not receiving anything. And you can also see this play out in places like um, Korea where I, I lived for quite a while and my husband is from and we were talking about this how Koreans are very very materialistic and there's such a schism between the men and the women there and the men are like very angry and hating on the women and there's like literally violence against women is terrible um, and the women are like why are they so crazy they're just they need to realize they're so, you know they're so crazy um, and I can understand why they do that because the men there are like acting kind of crazy well i believe i have a theory that it's because the men there they just they it's everything is about material material like get that money get that car get that um you know good looking man or woman get that bag or whatever it's it's very much like it's very fast culture um and i think you know respectfully it's actually very spiritually dead it's a country that doesn't have that history um that we have that seems like people are throwing away these days, but um, we have that basis in that. They don't really have that. And so I believe it's like a whole generation of men that are just starved of um, spiritual fulfillment and they're just so empty and they're just being told to chase after making money and getting like that Gucci suit and getting that Gucci bag for your woman or whatever. And it's like, okay, and I did it, or I'm trying to do it. And it's like, there's no fulfillment. And the women don't know how to give that spiritual nurturing to the man so that he feels a purpose, so that he can pour into her, so that she can pour into him, so that he can pour into her, right? And so, um, which is a beautiful figure eight, which is uh, literally marriage, which we I talked about many times on this channel. It's that marriage, right? And so that's what it means to be a soulmate, really. And I'm going to end on this. Um, this might be a little like bold to say or controversial to some people especially women um but i'm sure women who are watching this probably are like love it but um i had this dream um and where i saw like literally this oxygen molecule or sorry oxygen atom come down and touch this carbon atom and it like started vibrating and then i saw like a photon go like this and then i uh then i heard this is resurrection okay and that sounds like so random and i woke up and i was like that it was so vivid that dream it was crazy i can't even explain it um better than that and i looked it up and turns out this is combustion this is what combustion is and i don't know why that didn't even click to me because that's like from school probably like way back in high school when i was never listening in science which is sad because i love science now now that i'm 30 but um it's combustion. It's it's literally you you need it's it's a simplified, very very simplified version of combustion. But you got that carbon, you got that organic material, and you got the oxygen. Um, and I just I I can't really show you guys, but I I recommend to look it up. But if you look up like a diagram of combustion, you can see like this oxygen above, this um, organic material below, and then you have um, this fire which represents the photon. It's um, it's infrared. Uh, electromagnetic radiation right with that heat that that light that's produced and so i was like how is that re resurrection like how is a fire burning like carbon which is us like because we're carbon based right how is that resurrection and i thought about the, the shroud of turin where they say um to make that image you you must like because it's not pigments right you must need an amount of energy so like way more than the um earth creates 
or that you can find on the earth in a moment, in a you know, split second, this UV radiation that shone from Jesus' body as he was resurrected. And it's UV, again, it's that blue color, which is the heavenly color, um, that sapphire lapis lazuli color. It's like God's presence touched him and he turned into this like lapis lazuli UV radiation and he left that print of the shroud of Turin. So it's like a mystery. Um, people argue about it and discuss it and it's really cool. It's very interesting. Um, but you also have that imagery of, you know, God being this consuming fire and yet he's also Hava, he's life, which we talked about before. And so um, it's very interesting that you have this imagery of, of um, it's, it's very interesting because you have like green, you have um, this paradise, this creation, which is six, um, right? The six days of creation, the seventh uh, Sabbath, right? So the six is like the creation and everything's green and you have the Ashtaroth, right? It was a, it was a, um, a tree pole. That's what they would um, show it as. And, you know, the worship of Gaia and this like creation, green imagery. And yet if you burn it, you know, it turns red. And so you get that again, that foot of the cross imagery because you have that, uh, you got up at the head, you have the UV at the bottom, you have the infrared, which is red. Um, and, you know, it's almost like his fire, like exposes the true nature of creation that it's, um, you know, when his fire comes, it just, it, it leaves ash behind and this, you know, you get this revealing of all the carbon, because car uh, ash is pure carbon, right? And so, I just, I think there's this very, there's so much, you can really deep dive into that. Um, and and yet you have a God who, um, his creation, his woman per se, right? Um, even though she's a place of weakness and just like Eve was a place of weakness to Adam, um, he still comes down and he, with his hand and his power, his fire, he is it's the allegory of he burns her, <laughs> But he also, like I said, fire and water is the same thing spiritually. So he also bathes her in water and um, he's actually life to her, this um, hava, but also this radiation, which we literally need to survive. If there's no light, we would not be living. Um, and he comes down and he um, makes her alive. And being alive is like, I know this is not new age, but this is science. If you want some energy to come upon something, like I said, the carbon started vibrating. You, if you want to raise the energy levels, you know, from red to blue, you invigorate it and you cause it to begin to oscillate and to begin to vibrate faster and faster and faster because the red vibrates slowly. It oscillates, you know, very low oscillations. And then UV is like very vigorous. Okay. So it's like, he's literally starting the heart of um, his creation and, with that, you get that purification, and um, I just think that's really beautiful. I think it's the be most beautiful love story ever. I know it's like really, um, it sounds so complex, but it's just so beautiful, and that's the synergy. That's how it should be with the man and woman. So I hope that makes sense. I'm very tired and hungry, so I'm uh, turning this off, and if you made it this far, God bless you, and see you guys soon.